There's actually two pathways to transport NADH from the inner membrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. And uh, the first one, though, we're going to look at both of those. The first one is the malate aspartate shuttle. The, the second one is the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. So, what happens here? Let's start with NADH because that's what we're trying to transport in. It will combine with oxaloacetate. To, uh, it'll donate its hydrogens to oxaloacetate, forming malate and reforming NAD. The malate can go through this malate alpha ketoglutarate transporter, and when it does, so the enzyme malate dehydrogenase can catalyze this reaction forward and backwards depending on the concentration. So if we have a high concentration of oxaloacetate in NADH, it drives it to malate and NAD. So once that reaction occurs, it goes into the membrane where we're going to end up getting a high concentration of malate and NAD will combine with that and malate dehydrogenase will reform oxaloacetate. And then we have our NADH inside of the mitochondrial matrix. However, in order to get more NADH, we need to go through this pathway again. So oxaloacetate will combine with glutamate to form aspartate. The glutamate will become alpha-ketoglutarate, and that alpha-ketoglutarate will then go through the malate alpha ketoglutarate shuttle and come out of the matrix. The aspartate will go through the glutamate aspartate shuttle and it will combine with this alpha ketoglutarate out here reforming oxaloacetate and glutamate. The glutamate then goes through the glutamate aspartate transporter and is back over here to be reused again to reform aspartate. And so all of the intermediates um, that go through the cycle are, are recycled depending on what side of the uh, the membrane they're on, the only difference is that we get a net transport of reducing equivalents into the mitochondrial matrix. What's notable about this is if you remember gluconeogenesis, this is the same exact shuttle uh, used for gluconeogenesis, only it's running in reverse. So instead of um, oxaloacetate being transferred out, you're transferring NADH in. If you remember in the gluconeogenesis, instead of having um, malate being active, what would happen is we'd have pyruvate come into the matrix, pyruvate, and pyruvate would, uh, through pyruvate carboxylase, would become oxaloacetate. And then we would need to get the oxaloacetate out, so you would turn it into aspartate, move it out the aspartate transporter, and then the glutamate and alpha-ketoglutarate would recycle back in and out, while the oxaloacetate would be transferred up through gluconeogenesis. One last thing to note about this myelate aspartate shuttle is that it's two different uh, transporters. So this transporter is the malate alpha-ketoglutarate transporter. This one is the glutamate aspartate transporter. And so this could have been called the alpha ketoglutarate glutamate transport shuttle, but the scientific powers that be decided to call it the malate aspartate shuttle. The second way to transport reducing equivalents is through the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. Now, in the TCA, in the uh, TCA cycle, NADH is produced inside the um, mitochondrial uh, matrix. But in glycolysis, NADH is also produced outside the matrix. And so one of the ways to get that in besides the uh, malate aspartate shuttle is by using it. So one of the byproducts of glycolysis dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be com uh, uh, combined with NADH to produce glycerol 3-phosphate and NAD. Glycerol 3-phosphate can travel across the membrane and... Um, it can donate electrons to FADH, and FADH will donate those directly to CoQ. CoQ then donates those to um, complex 3. And so we're skipping complex 1 altogether, which uh, pumps protons. And since we're having fewer po protons pumped, less work is being done. And so some of the energy that we lose in the electron transport chain is dissipated as heat. This mechanism is most often used in stuff like muscle and brown adipose tissue. Um, so muscle 
and then let me zoom in here and we'll write brown adipose tissue brown adipose tissue and that is because those are uh, the primary mechanisms for producing heat inside of our bodies and it's also because we if you need to quickly regenerate NAD to keep glycolysis going then this will regenerate NAD and allow glycolysis to keep moving in a very intense muscle activity now it's a little bit more rapid but it produces fewer ATP and if you work out a lot you know it produces a lot more heat